For decades, Latinos wouldn't have recognized the Latino characters the media created, stereotypes that shaped the way other Americans viewed them. I love them. They love me back, man. It wasn't only other Americans whose prejudices were created and reinforced by these images. Latinos, too, bought into the stereotypes and began to believe it about themselves. I hate this town. I always hated it. To be a Mexican woman in a town like this. But a lot of things were changing in the nation, the caricatures of Latinos among them, in no small part thanks to the work of one angry young man. El pueblo de Nuestra Señora la Reina de Los Ángeles se porció un culo pendejo. In the late 70s, a young Chicano actor named Edward James Olmos, in his first mainstream break, delivered a powerful and intense stage performance as El Pachuco in Luis Valdez's Zoot Suit. Más chucote que la chingada. Pues órale. Cuando voy al vacilón y me meto a un salón, las chavalas gritan, vamos a bailar canzón. That role would earn him a Tony Award nomination and, just as important, a place as a new standard bearer of Latino culture, not only to those who observed it, but to those who lived it. Don't give me that bullshit. I got this filero from you. Did I tell you to kill the vato? Control yourself, Hank. Don't hate your rasa more than you love the gringo. I think it was um, a mark, the beginning of, of a presence, of a culture, of stories that were very important to that community and the struggles that that community really had to overcome. Before Zoot Suit, we were these people um, that acted a little bit, they directed a little bit, but we didn't have an impact on the national consciousness. But then along comes Luis Valdez, along comes El Pachuco, as played by Eddie Olmos, and all of a sudden we're in everybody's conscious mind. All of a sudden we are there. Acting roles came in fast and furious after that. He played an Indian activist in the horror movie Wolfen, and he created the role of the mysterious gaff in the cult classic Blade Runner with Harrison Ford. Got the wrong guy, pal. Lo fa, nehojma, te vaya play. Success gave almost the opportunity to pick and choose his roles carefully, always looking for characters that provided hope, dignity, and self-worth. In 1982, almost starred in PBS's The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, a moving tale about a Mexican man who was unjustly persecuted by the legal system. It was, in fact, uh, an early expression of the Chicano civil rights struggle, the struggle to free Gregorio Cortez and to stop uh, the brutality of the Texas Rangers and the racism that had been inflicted upon us. The film and its message was so important to Olmos that when he screened it in an L.A. theater, he opened the doors to patrons free of charge. We also felt that we had an opportunity to transform American cinema and to let Hollywood know that here was a movie that had an audience that could be successful and that could open doors. Almost took characters who could have been two-dimensional and made them rich and real. In 1985, for the TV series Miami Vice, he was the determined Lieutenant Castillo, a role that became the moral center of the series and which won almost both an Emmy and a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. Don't ever come up to my face like this again, detective. And he was able to show Latinos in all our glory, 
with all our failings, all our humility, and all our glory. For Olmos, it wasn't about glory. It was about guts, the inspirations and aspirations he found in everyday life. In 1988, Olmos portrayed real-life teacher Jaime Escalante, who turned his East L.A. students into math whizzes in spite of their difficult backgrounds. The film, Stand and Deliver. Those scores would have never been questioned if my kids did not have Spanish surnames and come from barrio schools. You know that. The film, like the man almost portrayed, inspired students to become standouts. In Latino communities throughout the nation, it reignited a sense of hope and self-esteem, and it earned almost an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor and vindicated his dedication to films that matter. This is not between you and me. Maybe not, but if I catch you on the street, I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. From there, almost moved behind the camera. His directorial debut, in which he also starred, was a 1992 film of equal but altogether different power, American Me. And action! Open your eyes up. Oh, 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 baby, don't get off the human. A brutal, realistic look at Chicano gang life in East L.A. Running that show on the inside is one thing. Running out here is a different trend. The movie represented Olmos's belief that gang life was as destructive to Latinos in its own way as the oppression and injustices of the outside world. The film shows gang life teaching dysfunctional and destructive images of discipline, pride, and power. This time, not all the attention that his work received was welcome. Almost got death threats from the Mexican mafia, and for a time, he feared for his life. And I think he, he paid a heavy price for that one. But Eddie is a person like Rosa Parks who can uh, demonstrate to us how, how much power we have if your intentions, motives, and purpose is intense and it benefits life people in the planet. Such concerns did not slow down almost or his pursuit of meaningful roles. In 1995, he won a second Globe this time as Best Supporting Actor for his role as a union leader in The Burning Season, based on a true story about a Brazilian rainforest activist played by Raul Julia. I know that the ranchers can buy the police, they can buy the judges, but they can't buy the law. In 1995, he starred in the critically acclaimed film My Family, Mi Familia, and two years later, he unleashed his characteristic intensity, playing the domineering father of the Latina singing sensation in Selena, starring Jennifer Lopez. That's it! What did you say? I said, I love him. And he loves me too. Of course he does. You're young, you're beautiful, and you're rich! Also in 1997, he had roles in The Disappearance of Garcia Lorca, 12 Angry Men, and Hollywood Confidential. I know I've been acting a little weird. But it was his role as the family patriarch in the PBS series American Family that once again broke new ground for Almost, featuring a Latino cast. Yes, we These do. These redheads get together and they help each other do we everything. No, why don't You're we a traitor. Each one of his roles have been unique, extraordinarily well-crafted individual performances. You can only compare him to the very best of the actors of Hollywood. I mean, this is the kind of work that Pacino and De Niro do, the kind of work that Marilyn Brando uh, did, uh, the kind of work that Anthony Quinn did. He has earned being in that rank. Olmos's energy and interests are unflagging. He recently directed Walkout, a story about the 1968 Chicano students' walkout protesting academic bias and dismal conditions in East L.A. schools. This is a man who has built himself from the ground up through specific application of lessons, well-learned and well-applied. 
almost directed walkout in part to help young people realize education and self-esteem are the key motivators to success. What I think is great about Eddie, apart from being a great actor and really putting himself on the line where he may be criticized, is his commitment and his seriousness on trying to be a good role model. Almost his career can literally be said to boldly go where no Latino has gone before. He currently plays the role of Commander Adama in the sci-fi channel's drama Battlestar Galactica. I want you to turn around and get your fat ass out of here. Get your men ready or I'll find someone who can. Dismissed! The series has won a Peabody Award and has been named by the American Film Institute as one of the top 10 outstanding TV programs of the year. I think it's appropriate that he go and save us in space. So I think the role fits him perfectly. Born the son of a Mexican immigrant and a Mexican-American mother, almost grew up in East Los Angeles. Several things saved him from the grip of gangs and drugs, music, and baseball, a sport that taught him the patience and discipline that would serve him well in the years to come. Not only as one of the best actors of his generation, but as a role model to his children and to legions of Latino fans. And try to instill in us self-discipline and, and um, humanity, kindness towards others. How thankful I am to be able to have a father like him and, and what he's been able to teach me. By his teens, Olmos was playing with the rock group Pacific Ocean. Because he wanted to become a better singer, he took a drama class at East L.A. College. A newfound love for acting soon eclipsed his musical aspirations and paved the way for his life's work. I think, you know, and what I find that he probably found most interesting about acting and why he went into it so intensely was the, you know, study of human emotion. You know, and that really intrigued him and, and moved him. Although almost is most recognized as an actor, he would rather be known as a humanitarian and an activist. In 1992, even before the smoke had cleared and the dead had been counted from L.A.'s riots, Olmos was one of the first well-known public figures to call for peace and for unity and to put his back into the effort to clean up and rebuild the ravaged city. He was like Desmond Tutu in the middle of the storm. He was the one that was directing traffic and helping people cross the street or healing or, you know, or stopping people from, from hurting each other. In Battlestar Galactica, he directs missions in outer space. In real life on Earth, his reach has been global as well. He has served as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. He has taken aid to indigenous people in Chiapas. And in 2000, he was arrested and jailed for 20 days for protesting the use of the Puerto Rican island Vieques as a U.S. military bombing test site. I think it's important to include Vieques as one more instance, as one more event in where when he is called to action, he's there to be counted. Here at home, almost works to make peace among warring gangs. He works with disabled and sexually abused children and promotes diversity in schools, universities, juvenile halls, and Indian reservations. Education, he believes, is a universal vaccine against the scourge of violence. He is what I call uh, a multidimensional warrior who, who came to this planet uh, solely to uh, bring unity, harmony, and healing. His own production company has produced documentaries dealing with gang life and date violence. And in 1999, he launched a multimedia project organized by the Smithsonian, Americanos, Life in the United States. He co-founded Latino Public Broadcasting and the Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival. And recently, he agreed to become the spokesperson for Farmers Insurance. In part, he said, because of the company's commitment to supporting programs in the Latino community. 
he is so believable, so credible that our Latino community said, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go get some farmers. Now, that is a big compliment to him. But there's other ways to end this story. The man who became an actor along the way, almost incidental to his search for his sense of himself as a human being, teaches that there is only one race, the human one. Edward James Olmos' message and his example to the nation's vast spectrum of color and age and class is that hard work makes all things possible. It is his own Sueño Americano, the American dream. And that's a perfect way to end this play. Happy ending, Itolo.